Yes, uh, we can start now. Okay, so um, just uh, to say welcome back to everyone. Um, so we continue as scheduled with uh, our next talk. Um, so our next speaker is Sijan Bandari from the Community Self-Reliance Center in Kathmandu, Nepal. And Sijan will uh, talk about uh, the free and open source uh, Malus plugin for land cover analysis and prediction. Um, and uh, will also show us a case study in, uh, in Nepal. Uh, so Sijan, if you're ready, you can uh, share your screen. Okay. Okay, thank you, Nibana. Is your display? Uh yeah, now I see it. Okay. Did you did you see? Yeah. Yeah. It looks good. You can uh, start. Oh. Uh, thank you, everyone. Now, first, I would like to thank the organizing team for providing me this opportunity to present my research entitled Free and Open Source Mollus Plugin for Land Cover Analysis and Prediction, a case study in Vanepa and Dulikhel Municipality, Nepal. We group of five members uh, have done this research and I have led this project. Moving forward, today I will discuss this uh, list of contents. First, I will introduce my research and then I will uh, describe about what was the uh, objectives of research and I will also dis discuss about what was the main motivation or what factors drive to do this research and I will also discuss the study area we consider for this research and uh, similarly I will also discuss about the data used to conduct uh, this research and uh, accordingly we will also discuss about methodological framework results and discussions limitations and recommendations, and finally the conclusion. Introduction. As we know, land cover is one of the most important factors in the sector of natural resource management. It includes forest, bare land, water bodies, built up areas, etc. In context of Nepal, like the developing country like Nepal, this is one of the main uh, factor, main theme and talk but not implemented so the analysis of land cover pattern is so much important uh, to for the decision makers uh, for the uh, proper management of the land and due to recent development in the Since Nepal administrative structure is divided into three levels, the first one is federal, second one is provincial, and third one is local. According to the current policy of Nepal, the local level has full rights or uh, local levels is fully authorized for making their land use planning, but they have to uh, follow the Land Use Act that is endorsed by our parliament in 2019. As uh, this local government is uh, currently from in context of Nepal, so they have the limited budget, they have the limited um, resources. So we have uh, we have planned to uh, let us uh, in investigate the molus. Would it, would it be effective since it is a free and cheaper tool? So uh, molus can be act as a baseline for decision related to land use planning for local government. We have limited budget and. Two, one of the urban growing cities of Nepal, Bonepa municipality and Dulikhal municipality were taken as the study area to conduct the research. These both municipalities are located at the Cabre Plancho district of the province 3. As you can see in the map depicted here, and this is the uh, urbanization in the Bonepa municipalities. 
these were the data that we used for our research for the 1992 we used the landsat 5 thematic mapper similarly for the 2002 we used the landsat 7 tm similarly for 2002 well we used the landsat 7 etm plus and finally for 2020 we used the landsat 8 oli as you can see we have uh, maintained the synchronization in the date since we are uh, performing the spe uh, special temporal analysis so uh, we have used the uh, comparable temporal resolution all these data sets were from the multispectral which have a resolution of 30 meter and uh, these all data sets were acquired from the united states of geological survey this is the uh, main methodological framework that we used to conduct our research in first phase first we uh, acquired all the necessary data set as i discussed before then we uh, we pre-process them as uh, these different data sets were acquired in different time frames so uh, we perform radiometric elevation we perform atmospheric correction then uh, we again move forward and we do the image classification in image classification, we have used the uh, maximum likelihood classification algorithm of supervised classification. Then, after the, um, uh, classifying all these images, uh, we then uh, assess the quality of these images uh, using the compact coefficient, user accuracy, producer accuracy parameters. Then, after getting the desired results, uh, we then move towards the change analysis, uh, which was one of the major uh, objective of our research then in phase two we again identify the drivers what were the drivers for the land cover change from 1992 to 2020 and we prepared the driver for 2002 then from first phase we uh, taken the 1992 2002 and 2002 by land cover map and from phase two we taken the uh, drivers that were prepared for 2002 and finally we integrate this both data sets and using the freely available open source plugin that is Molus, we use a modeling validation and prediction for year 2032 this is the first result that we generated from this research and uh, for the uh, forest we use the uh, definition that is already illustrated in the uh, policy of government of nepal that is all the community forest vegetation including wildlife conservation preserve area soft bosses nursery plant etc similarly for agriculture we use the land covered with the uh, low vegetations that contains agriculture production such as corn crops cash crops horticulture etc similarly for the build up we use the residential area commercial zone industrial zone public use and open space zone and other utility features such as roads, bridges and other physical infrastructures. Similarly for the barren, we use the non-vegetation that also contains the erosion land. These all were taken from the policy of the government of Nepal. This is the results that we generated from our accuracy assessment. As we have uh, obtained the copper coefficient greater than 0.7 in all cases as you can see for 1992 uh, we have uh, achieved 0.788 that is fine uh, under the scope of this study and for 2002 we have achieved the 0.834 and similarly for 2012 we have achieved the 0.806 and similarly for 2020 we have achieved the 0.8 all are above the 0.6 value which is desirable Similarly, you can see for the producer accuracy and user accuracy for respective land cover classes. This is the scenario we get from uh, our results. Since we can, we can see there is a the, uh, little increase in the built up area that is by 2.3%, whereas there is uh, less increment in the forest and agricultural land respectively one and 1.7 percent that is for the case of 1992 to 2002 similarly for 2002 to 2012 well, the increment is little increase that is 3.4 percent and uh, there is 
decrement of minus 3% and minus 2% for forest and agricultural land respectively. Similarly, the barren land has also increased by 1.91% for case of 2002 and 2012. Similarly, for 2012 to 2020, the uh, built up land has again rise by 5.5%, whereas the forest and agricultural land has been decreased by 32 to 3.6% respectively, whereas the barren land is again rise by plus 1.2% in case of 2012 to 2020. And this is the case for the 1992 to 2020, which is uh, the study period for our research. It can be observed that about 11.3% of land has been raised uh, in case of build up, whereas there is minus 7.5% and minus 7.4% decrease in forest and agricultural land respectively. And this is the overall summary of the land cover pattern from 1992 to 2020. We can observe that forest and agricultural land are simultaneously decreased, whereas built up and barren are simultaneously increased. And this is the second phase that is driver factor identification and preparation. Since uh, we have only done the literature review for the identification of driving factors since uh, these research were conducted during the COVID pandemic. So uh, we are not allowed it to go to conduct the household surveys or the community survey to get the realistic drivers. So from the literature review, we get the five major drivers. The, uh, the drivers which are depicted in the yellow color are the drivers which we uh, only consider, uh, sorry, which we only identify but not consider for the molding and validation since uh, we cannot uh, model this uh, sets of data set due to the scope of our project and the limitations of time. Besides the remaining uh, proximate drivers, physical drivers, dam and slow, and the population density were used for the modeling and validation. Moving forward, in proximity drivers, we have used the Oranico Highway. It is one of the major highway uh, that has influenced the uh, urbanization in both municipalities and the district roads. Uh, this district roads has uh, converted the agricultural land into the uh, uh, urban land or built up areas a lot. Similarly, this uh, existing settlements, uh, these major services such as Kathmandu University, uh, you can see KU and the Dulikhal Hospital, DH, and you can uh, similarly see SMA as the Sri Memorial Hospital. These all proximate drivers uh, mainly influence the conversion of agricultural land to built up areas. Moving forward, this is the physical driver that we consider for our research. One is slope and one is digital elevation model. Uh, these uh, data sets were received from the USGS website. Similarly, the population density, one, one of the socio-economic drivers which was uh, mainly responsible for the uh, 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 increment in the built up areas. Since uh, these data sets were acquired from the uh, old population organization, uh, these uh, are also the data sets which were uh, freely available in the old population organization. Moving forward, and this is the uh, drivers, uh, so real estate business, and this one is the Dulikhal Hospital, which were majorly responsible for the transformation of our uh, organization in uh, Dulikhal municipality, this Kathmandu University, uh, due to which the uh, settlement in uh, settlements along the periphery of this university grown um, um, and, and grown so much after the establishment of this university and this Oranico Highway. Uh, of course, this Oranico Highway, I think this uh, is the image in 2010 or 2012. So, of course, this uh, uh, highway, the, uh, there are lots of settlements at present. So, moving forward, this is one of the main uh, metrological formula that we use for the modeling and validation. Uh, first, we take the land cover maps of 1992 and 2000 two which we prepared uh, in first phase then we take the drivers for two, year 2002 which we prepared in the second phase why we uh, take the 2002 
drivers only there is the reason see after indicating this value we have to put the value of n if we put the value of n by inserting initial year as 1992 and final year as 2002 then uh, for the value of n it will predict for the uh, 2012 means the interval between 2002 and 1992 is 10 so it will predict for 2012 when we put the value of n equal to 2 then it will predict for 2022 similarly when we put the value of n equal to 3 then it will predict for 2032 See, uh, similarly this process will goes on so for at initially we put the value of n equal to 1 after integrating this uh, this uh, land cover data sets and driver then after uh, integrating these data sets in Molus plugin which is available in QGIS we evaluate the correlation of the driver since the highly correlated drivers will not influence the model so we will neglect them in, uh, in our case the dem and slope were highly correlated so we <coughs> neglected the uh, slope value since it is a drive a form of the digital elevation model. Then after we generate the tension matrix. The tension matrix is this, uh, that matrix, which has to, or uh, which will tell about the transition or the probability of the conversion of one land cover classes to another respective land cover classes of the different EPO. Similarly, then after we insert the NN parameters by hit and trial and through literature, then we trans, uh, perform the tension potential modeling uh, through the neural network then after we perform the ca simulation in order to uh, simulate for the 2012 and then we validate our cnn model by uh, comparing with reference uh, land cover and the uh, simulated land cover for 2012 then finally after getting the desired uh, or uh, value of our model then we change the value of n why we only change the value of n because we have to assume that within these drivers within this uh, land cover classes and within this n and values we will get this uh, model validation value so we only change the value of n equal to 3 then we again uh, regenerate the model and get the prediction for 2032 and this is the uh, ANN values which we had used for our uh, research. That is neighborhood is equal to 3 by 3. It means it will, during the uh, simulation, it will take the 3 by 3 windows and uh, random samples of 5000. It means 80 20. It will uh, take the, for this uh, modeling, it will take 80% and for the testing, it will take 20%. And learning rate, how to learn the model and uh, maximum iteration. And this similar hidden layer, since the in neural network we have to put the hidden layer in between the input layer and output layer and momentum. It is a, about all the uh, calibration or operational parameter. Uh, as you can see the one of the snip uh, during the neural network call. Moving forward, our model predict that 9% of built up where actually it was 10.5%. Similarly, our model predict that 2% of barren where it was actually 3.4%. Our model predict that 36.6% of forest where it was actually 34%. Our model predict that 52.6% of agriculture where it was actually 51.9%. Similarly, the percentage of correctness of our model was 81.66% and copper overall 0.C. According to Sputra and Lee, if you get the copper overall greater than or equal to 6, then it is accepted. As you can also see the comparable maps were generated from the simulated on compared to actual map. So this is the expected future land cover scenario for 2032 for the study area that we consider for our research. It is expected that about 5 0.6% of land will be again increased while 2.6% of land will be decreased for forest and agriculture respectively and uh, you can see for the percentage and you can see for the kilometer square with derived from these results.
the uh, major two limitations of this research were we only focus on the four land cover class due to limited spatial resolution so uh, in order to get the more land cover classes uh, for categorization according to, to land use act we need the higher uh, resolution images and uh, next one is we only focus the driving factors through literature review and data availability thus household survey should be conducted for realistic data and prediction results can be more enhanced and relatively on conclusion effective policy should be implemented by both municipal officer in order to manage the continuous growing urbanization similarly cnn modeling is increasingly used in llc change analysis and prediction and finally freely available models has capability to model and simulate with desirable accuracy that can act as baseline for the land use planner in local land use council so at currently this is the situation of the bonpa municipality so it needs to be this as uh, we have to face a lot of problem since the climate change problem is growing day by day so thank you from nepal yeah thank you for this presentation it's uh, always very interesting to see how um, open source tools are uh, used in real world scenarios um, so I will use the opportunity to um, ask you a few questions. Um, so maybe first we start uh, with a question from uh, our audience. Um, yeah, maybe Emily can, uh, can take over. Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so the question from the audience is, how did you address classification area in your area estimates? Oh. Uh, I, I couldn't get it. Could you please repeat once? Mm -hmm. So, how did you address classification error in your oh. area estimates? Oh, oh. So uh, yes, this is one of the major problem in remote sensing, as we didn't get the desired accuracy. So, in our case, we, uh, we have done um, different methods. We have also used the object-based image classification and uh, uh, by the return trial and successively trying uh, and using the graph plots that the uh, different uh, works graph plots and the different band graph plots uh, we have generated the results up to desirable accuracy the main source is graph plots successively we plot the graphs uh, uh, and again we do the return trial we plot the graph from the signature and again we do the return trial we plot the graph for signature and from successively it and tell we get the desired police the uh, result what i described before um okay maybe i use the opportunity also to ask a question um about the land cover maps um did you uh, create the land cover maps by yourself or you used the uh, already available no. data no no the land uh, oh, we prepared by ourselves we prepared by ourselves uh, using the Landsat uh, image data set, I, as I described before. And uh, what kind of uh, algorithm did you use for the classification? Uh, for classification, we used maximum likelihood classification algorithm of supervised classification, image classification technique, MLC. Okay. So it was uh, basically, uh, you were basically able to perform the whole analysis uh, within QGIS, or uh, you used also some... Uh, some other programs or um, self-written scripts? No, for uh, for phase one, uh, we use different platform. Uh, our uh, focus, uh, the open source focus was only on phase three, that is uh, Molus for prediction. Uh, we used uh, Molus uh, for prediction. That means in uh, phase three, only we use the open source. Uh, if there are any more questions from the audience, please feel free to either you can type them into the chat box and there's also a questions um, uh, form. Uh, so we welcome those um, as we have some. I think some I think I am from Nepal, so my accent is a little bit. Uh, so, 
so many people couldn't understand i think <laughs> well it's i think it's okay we're all from uh, different countries so um people are used to listen to different accents but maybe we have um, maybe two more minutes i will use the opportunity to yes. do, uh, to ask another question uh so um do you have um, any experience in uh, or do you know of any other uh, case studies where they use this plugin uh, for other areas oh. Oh. or how yeah, yeah, difficult yeah. do you think it is to apply it in another area oh uh uh, since our case study was in hilly region, so, so topography was so undulating or so complex topography, so uh, and the area was so small, since the, it is a local government, uh, so uh, after my uh, research, my next batch or my juniors also uh, uh, try for the plain area, so they, uh, they uh, obtain I think about 92% of accuracy. It means 92 percent correctness of the model. In our case, we have only achieved uh, 81 percent, but they get the 92 percent in the plain area. So that was the major difference, uh, comparable difference. So I think in plain area, the molecules will affect uh, more precisely than in complex undulating area. Oh, okay, that's an interesting observation. So you think uh, if we uh, for example, add more parameters that are related uh, to the uh, relief that might help them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, now I am uh, currently working with 14 local governments uh, through my organization. So uh, now I am planning to endorse this open source uh, into the government policy one because this is open source. So no need of uh, financial in the developing countries like Nepal. There is this so much uh, obstacle for the financial budget so i'm um, trying i am doing my best to endorse this uh, uh, molis plugin and customizing it for the land management work so i'm currently i am involving that work only yeah that sounds great um, actually making a if you're making a difference using um, these um, yeah. open source uh, um, tools Okay, uh, so I think um, our time for this presentation is finished. And uh, as uh, we mentioned earlier, um, our last present, unfortunately, could not um, uh, present today. Uh, so, um, yeah, I would like everyone uh, to, I'd like to thank to everyone for attending. And uh, I think uh, we had some uh, quite interesting discussions uh, during this session. Um, the recordings will be available soon. Um, just a reminder to all of the um, speakers um, that uh, you, you got an email which asked you to sign a document uh, basically saying that you agree for the recording to be shared. So um, if you haven't done that, please do so, so we can share the recordings and people who couldn't uh, watch the talks live can uh, maybe catch it later. And uh, yeah, with uh, this, I would like to close the session. So again, thanks everybody and have a nice rest of the day or uh, depending on your time zone beginning. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, Nicola. Bye, Emily.